So before we start today's video, I just wanted to let everyone know that I actually have a Mercari store account whatever um i have some things on it like some lotions and mists that didn't really work out for me some doubles of blind boxes um that i already have obviously that's what a double means emma <laughs> um not necessarily the things in this video um will be up there they might be if i can find a way to sanitize them if i can't then obviously i can't put them up there or maybe they're unused we'll we'll find out if you want to check out my mercari i'll leave my username in the description hi guys my name is emma welcome or welcome back to my channel so for today's video we're going to be doing a products i regret buying <laughs> um for whatever reason like i picked up these products they arrived if I ordered them online or I bought them in store and I was like, why did I do that weeks later or however much time later? You know, no hate to any of these brands. There's actually some things from brands that I actually really like in my little bag here, um, but they just didn't work out for me or they're just not stuff that I reach for and didn't really realize it when I saw it online or saw it in store. So, and if these products work for you, I'm happy for you. Keep using them. Use them up. You know, they just didn't work out for me or I'm not inclined to use them. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first item I have is a skincare item. This is the Tony Moly Vital Vita 12, the Porcel Ampule. Definitely not saying any of that, right? But this is what it looks like. It's just a serum. Um, and what it's supposed to do is, um, so the pore soul ampule is, um, has vitamin H, centella, asiatica extract. I can't say any of this, but what it does, <laughs> ingredients are not my thing. Um, but the reason I picked it up is because it has salicylic acid in it and I really, I, you know, I love me some salicylic acid, but this really doesn't do anything. <laughs> um, when I first started trying it, it just kind of broke me out. Um, like I was like, oh, it's just my skin getting used to it, I guess. And, but now like it just doesn't do anything. I don't feel like it's really targeting my acne and I'm going to continue to use it just so I can like use it up. Um, but it just don't do nothing <laughs> like i don't know how else to say that um so yeah definitely kind of regret getting this guy what can you do you don't know till you know so that the second skincare item that i have is the pacifica i don't know what these are called but they're basically they come they come in this little tin and they're smile line patches this is what they look like completely unused. I got these a while ago and I still haven't used them. And what you're supposed to do, which I didn't know until the lighting change, where the sun is behind me. The sun is out because it is spring now. So lighting's gonna change, I'm sorry. But um, yeah, these are for your smile lines. You're supposed to put a serum on the actual patches and then put them on your smile lines. Um, I didn't know that when I got them. I thought it had like the product built in. And for that reason, I've never really used this because the serums I have are mostly like acne fighting serums. It doesn't make sense for me to, in my opinion, use that as like a smile line corrector, I guess. Um, so I've never used these. It wasn't a very smart purchase. My smile lines aren't even that bad, honestly. They get a little worse with makeup, but it's, you know, it's something settling into the wrinkles on my face. So. <laughs> don't know what I was thinking y'all the next product that I have is a concealer this is the derma blend professional cover care full coverage concealer in 15n um, this isn't a bad concealer like I like derma blend face products they're very full coverage the doe foot is massive we love holds a lot of product but guys what was I thinking when I bought a shade like that's too dark for me. That's too dark for me. It's not like, you know, insanely dark or anything like that. I gotta roll up my sleeves. I think I was going through this phase with like face products where I was just, um, I was, I kept buying the lightest one of like every whatever I was getting and that was too light for me. So I was just like, oh, well I need to, I need to just, you know, go a couple shades darker. And for some reason when I bought this, I went very dark. Like, no, Emma. 
No. <laughs> Good lord, good lord. So it's a good concealer, I like it. It's full coverage, it really works for me. I got the wrong shade. <laughs> I've used it before, like I've been like, oh, what if I just put it all over my face, like, you know, and then not use it as brightener, maybe that will work, but you know, there is an obvious, obvious difference. I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking. So there's that, I need to grab a tissue. I feel like I'm gonna have to like, keep brightening up the ring light, cause I'm not used to, fil used to filming with any sort of sunlight. <laughs> The next product that I want to show you is the Ofra Cosmetics Liquid Highlighter. Um, they're precision, long-lasting glow drops in the shade Monroe. This is what they look like. I love me the powder Ofra highlighters, but this... Maybe it's not the right shade for me. This is the lightest shade that they have as of right now, I think, or whenever I purchased it, but it just really doesn't show up on my skin when I put it on the high points. And I'm not really someone who likes to use like liquid highlighter as primer. I don't really get it, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, so I would, I would just put it on my high points and be like, and it just, even before I powdered, it just really wouldn't do anything. And you know, when it's Ofra, you expect my eyes watering. You expect blinding, you expect like in your face highlight, and this just isn't giving that. And I guess, you know, a subtle highlight's more in. We're not in 2016 anymore, but I'm still stripe of white blinding highlight fam. Like I still, that's still my favorite thing. So it just didn't, did I get on it? I got something on it, hello? So yeah, this just isn't bright enough for me. It just doesn't do enough for me, so. It's unfortunate, it's unfortunate. This is also a highlight. This is from Kaja. Kaja, I believe that's how you say it. This is the Mochi Glow Highlighter in 01 Toy Alien. That's what it looks like. And this just, again, like, this is a better shade for me than the um, Ofra one, but it just doesn't do enough. I'll cover that, I'm blinding you, I'm sorry. It just really doesn't do enough. It's just not as bright as I want it to be. It's a little bit of like a putty formula, which is fine, I guess. I remember having the um, the Stila putty highlighter, and there's it's just it just doesn't give enough for me. Like putty highlighters just don't really do anything for me. Maybe I'm using them wrong, I don't know. But like, I guess this isn't a full putty. It's, but it has like a putty-like texture to it and it just doesn't give enough for my highlighter preferences, so. I wanna try more from Kaja. I know they have the like, Bento, I think they're called, eyeshadow, like stackable eyeshadow palettes. And those look like wonderful quality. I've heard good things about those, but this just isn't it for me. So a couple of eyeshadow palettes. Mm, I am a menace when it comes to buying eyeshadow palettes that I do not need. I love eyeshadow palettes. I love eyeshadow. It's my favorite part of my makeup routine next to like eyeliner and highlight mascara um it's where i feel like i get most creative in my makeup fix my posture <laughs> so i tend to you know get eyeshadow palettes and be like oh this is kind of pretty i want it i love it <laughs> um and then not use it because i didn't think about if i found it to be a cohesive color story or you know if it actually sparked any creativity in me you know i'm very easily influenced when it comes to eyeshadow palettes and it needs to just stop um but i actually saw this online this is the Rude Cosmetics Roaring Twenties palette in Reckless. The outside looks like what the actual palette looks like, and it's a beautiful, beautiful palette. Um, the shimmers are beautiful duochromes, especially on the Ritz. Um, honestly, on the Ritz is the whole reason I even bought this palette, and you shouldn't buy a palette <laughs> just for one shade, especially when there's um, 19 other shades, because there's 20 shades within this palette. And I find it difficult to blend and really use. I don't feel like there's enough true mattes in it compared to the rest of the shimmers. Um, I don't feel like there's a whole lot for me to like blend out in terms of transitions, sh transition shades, except for like this one, but that could be too light for like this super dark brown down here or the dark green over here or what have you. So it's just not a palette that makes a whole lot of sense to me. And I picked it up because I saw like other YouTubers using it. And I was like, oh my God, I love that green. I love that. What shade is that specifically on the Ritz? I love that shade. I need this palette. And I just got it without really thinking like, is this a palette that's, you know, smart for you, goes with how you like to do your eyeshadow, how you like to be creative? And the answer is no. <laughs> 
So this was kind of a, this was definitely a thing that I regret buying. The next palette that I have that I regret buying is the ColourPop High Tide palette. Um, this one has a bunch of like teal, tealy blues, very oceany. And I bought this palette um, because I didn't have any like blues in my collection at the time. I mean, I have like, now I have ColourPop Fade Into Hue, which has like an entire blue row on it. But this one isn't even like true blues, it's like teals. And it's like completely untouched except for like swatching. I have not used this palette and every time I'm like, I kind of want to use it, I'm going to use it today. I decide to use something else. <laughs> Um, it's a beautiful palette and I really like the teals in it. I think it's beautiful, but it's just not practical for me to have. Maybe if it was like a true blue palette I would keep it, but really it's not. Uh, if I didn't have the Fade Into Hue by ColourPop, I have a, I can get these tealies, teal-y colors, <laughs> teal-ish colors with other palettes that I have. I've once accidentally made a teal. <laughs> eyeshadow look with another palette that I have. I think that was the, I think that was the Aurora Strut palette, you know, happens. <laughs> so this one, this one might go on my Mercari since it's like not even really touched. If I wanted a true blue palette that just to like not use all the time, but just like have in case the times that I do want to do blue eyeshadow, I should have got that instead of something that's a little more niche. Love ColourPop, love their shadows. I have a lot of their eyeshadow palettes, but this one just really shouldn't have I really just shouldn't have bought it. And the last eyeshadow palette that I have to show you is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina palette. Now this is wild to me because I love purples. I am a purple girly. Around when this palette came out, there wasn't like a ton of well done purple shadows on the scene. I also got this a long time after it came out. I don't know what convinced me to get it. <laughs> um, I, purple eyeshadows are my favorite to use because my favorite color is purple. And the shadows in this are super unique, but realistically there's only like four, maybe five true matte shades. One of them works as a transition. Some of the other shimmers I don't even touch. I've used quite a bit of Love and Wild Child, but Wild Child leaves a lot to be desired. And so does Celestial. Like the shimmers aren't even like, they don't even really pack a punch like Anastasia Beverly Hills shimmers, I think did. I, f I remember them being really well done, but Shadow, and they, a lot of things from 2016, um, we're not remembering correctly in terms of quality, but it just, it just doesn't give. It's just not giving the way I want it to. And it's kind of wild that they made the two standouts of this palette in terms of shades, because they're co really cool shades. Soul, and love they made those satins so they're like they're a little bit harder for like beginners to use you just need like a matte and a shimmer or you know want to use the like pinks and purples because other than that if you take away the pinks and the purples it's a completely neutral palette and like you can mix and match but not if like the standouts aren't giving enough and if they're harder to blend but you're not getting it and then i finally bit the bullet and it was a mistake because it's just not what i want it to be so super disappointing what can you do and it's i especially shouldn't have after like all the uh, like color pop and um glam light who have the really nice shimmers and mattes that i like the shadows um i don't know why i went back to anastasia beverly hills kind of using them being like this isn't the quality that i remember it could also just be like i said before we're not remembering these things right because these were the best eyeshadows at the time and now formulas are just getting better and better so if i put more i should just i should have put more thought in before getting this and if i did i i wouldn't have so um, I've only got a couple more products here. This one is the Smashbox. This is a, uh, the Smashbox Photo Finish Endurance Breathable Setting Spray. Um, this is alcohol free. It has a silk screen complex. I really like Smashbox like complexion. There's the one I was like, what word am I searching for right now? Um, I really like their um, complexion products, so I was really excited to try this. Um, I mentioned this, I think in my very first video, I hauled it, and this, but the spray, I, yeah, I mentioned there too, um, the spray is just 
terrible. <laughs> like, I, I might have just gotten a funky one, I don't know, but like, I never really pay attention to how it makes my makeup wear, because I'm just distracted by the fact that I just get it all over my face, because <laughs> the nozzle is just so harsh. It's like clogged to where only one, like a little bit on one side is like a little bit of the mist, and then one side it's just so, just like a, just a straight stream into your face <laughs> and that's not very fun to use i'm gonna be honest with you it's very obnoxious to use actually because you're not feeling like you're getting an even coverage of the setting spray you have to basically just douse your face um to a make sure you get an even coverage and b you're dousing it anyway because of that strong stream it's just more work than it's worth um if anyone has used this and their nozzle is fine please let me know because i have other setting sprays that I like the spray on and do wonders and make my makeup last all day, so. And the final product that I have, y'all are gonna laugh at me, is the Bath and Body Works Sunshine Mimosa Perfume. Now, I like this scent. I enjoy bubbly, champagne-y, citrus scents, but I paid full price for this. Like, this is when I was first getting into Bath and Body Works and I saw, and I would, didn't really understand the point of a fragrance mist. Now I do, now I love fragrance mist, but I was just like, why would I get the fragrance mist? I'd just get the perfume, even though this is like $50 and you know, it's cheaper than other perfumes on the market, but then at the same time, Bath and Body Works has sales all of the time, you know? And uh, granted, they don't have a ton of perfumes out. Those can tend to be limited edition. I'm not even sure if they still have Sunshine Mimosa. I really don't know. I don't think so. You can correct me on that. I'm really not sure. They definitely, I know for a fact they don't have the perfume anymore, but like there's no reason to pay full price for these because they're not a huge step up from the body mist. Like they smell the same. Um, you might argue that the staying powder is better on this, but like not really, not compared to some of the other perfumes I have um, from just other brands or whatever. Again, love the scent, but there was no reason for me to purchase this perfume at full price. Like that's ridiculous. You also don't get a ton, you know? It's not, not like other perfumes. You don't get a ton in here, so. So that is all I have for you guys for products that I regret buying. Ugh. I'm not sure if I can put any of it on my Kari. If you're interested in any of it, I guess, let me know. And then I guess I can put it on Mercari. Um, I can disinfect some of these things, but like not all of them, like the concealer. I can't, I can't put on Mercari. I've already used it. So yeah, um, I love you guys so, so much. And again, I will leave my Mercari in the description so you can see some other things that I'm trying to, you know, declutter out of my life and my collection of objects. <laughs> um, yeah, so I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.